Hi friends, Dr. Renee, the Women's Holistic Health Expert, back with you today to talk a little bit more about mental well-being and mental health. Why am I talking so much about it? Well, May is National Mental Health Month. So I think it's a really good time that we have this discussion. And my question to you is, do you think that your diet could actually be contributing to your anxiety or depression? And my answer is maybe. There's a whole new uh, segment of psychiatry called nutritional psychiatry. And there's actually been some that have quoted that said 80 to 90% of people, 80 to 90% they're estimating, wouldn't need medications for anxiety or depression if they just followed some simple nutritional tips. So how can it be so simple, right? Well, the problem is it is simple, but I didn't say it was easy because of the way that we have transitioned into our standard American diet, our Western diets, out of convenience. It's really actually, the tips are simple, but it's sometimes really hard to implement. And not only that, it's really hard to stick to it. So what we have to understand is how we eat and what we eat has a huge impact on how we feel. And this just goes, it goes beyond feeling happy or sad, which I've talked about in the past. It goes deeper. It goes to how much energy you have, how you sleep, it, whether or not you can concentrate, and your stress level, all right? So in the last video, I talked about a chemical called serotonin, which is that chemical that makes us feel happy. And the majority of people think that it's mainly produced in the brain, but it's not. Like I said in the last video, 95% of it is actually produced in the gut, and it relies on a balance of good and bad bacteria in the gut in order to be produced. But it goes so much deeper than that. For instance, you know, the sugars that we eat that is added to processed food or just the sugars by themselves spike cortisol and that sends our anxiety into a tailspin. So not only with not having a good balance of gut bacteria doesn't allow us to make enough of that happy chemical, then we eat certain foods that spike another hormone called cortisol, which is our stress hormone, which really throws us into a tailspin. So there's one huge win that you can actually make and probably significantly impact your anxiety and your depression just by cutting out processed foods. I know, I said it was simple. I didn't say it was gonna be easy, I said it was simple. And that's not gonna only impact your mood, such as the happy chemical, right? It's actually gonna help with your stress level because you're not gonna have that spike in your blood sugar and triggering the cortisol. It's also gonna help you feel more, con uh, more focused and better concentration. Is going to have you sleeping better and giving you more energy. So all around a huge win just by doing that simple little tip and trick of cutting out processed foods, which is inevitably going to cut down on the added sugars. So what can you eat to actually help? Well, number one, eat meat. <laughs> I know my plant-based peeps out there are not going to be very happy with me right now. However, if you're a meat lover, you're going to be very happy with me. Animal protein actually contains some essential omega-3s that are really beneficial to our, not only our body, but our brain, as well as essential minerals and vitamins. And there's actually been studies that show that those that do not eat meat might be at an increased risk of depression. So I'm not telling you to go start eating meat by any means. However, it's a little bit of information for my meat lovers out there that actually it will help you when it comes to mood disorders such as anxiety and depression. And the other thing is, in addition to cutting out processed foods, and I sort of said this before, is cutting out added sugars. And that's kind of going hand in hand with the cutting down on, on processed foods. However, I'm not, com com not completely, believe me. <laughs> and what that's going to do, as I said before, is that sugars actually um, spike cortisol. So it spikes insulin, which then spikes cortisol. It's like this vicious cycle, which I've gone into in the past and it continues to loop around. So spiking your cortisol is actually going to send your anxiety again into a tailspin. So just cutting down those added sugars is really gonna extra, add the extra layer on top of cutting out processed foods that you might actually need to help with your anxiety and your depression. And like I said before, these tips are simple, but they're not easy. What does that mean? Well, I'm not expecting you in one night to cut out all of these things, right? But little by little, cut out. So for instance, maybe the first couple weeks you cut out sugary drinks like sodas and coffees. It's really easy now that probably not many people are going out for their, their coffee with all the added stuff in it. 
just do that for a couple weeks and see how you feel, okay? And you're probably gonna save some money also, especially if you go out for your coffees. Number two, for the couple of weeks after that, start cutting out some junk food, some of that packaged chips, cookies, whatever. And you know what? Maybe make it so like on a Sunday, say, I'm not gonna buy it anymore because it's not even gonna be in the house. So now you're not only layering on cutting out those sugary drinks, but now you've cut down on your junk foods. And then you're gonna to wanna, to, the third step is gonna be cutting down on things like pastas and breads and rices, okay? Add in heartier foods like quinoa and sweet potatoes. Those are all packed with the nutrients your body needs and it's gonna actually not spike your blood sugar like the pastas, like the white breads, okay? And the last thing I'm gonna want you to try to get rid of is all the hidden sugars. So this is when you're gonna become a, a label reader and look at things like uh, your dressings that have a lot of hidden sugars, your, your different condiments, and some of your sauces, which is where a lot of sugars hid from me. And I didn't realize it until I started looking at the labels because they were organic. So, you know, if you kind of do this in a stepwise fashion, it may take you a few months to get right to the bottom to get to those hidden sugars. But I guarantee if you do it slow enough, you're actually gonna start feeling the benefits and you're gonna be able to stick with it because you're feeling so much better and because you did it so slowly. You're not, your taste is also gonna change. You're not even gonna miss those foods. And the last thing I'm gonna want you to do is to add on the fiber. And I've talked about the good gut bacteria, you know, helping with the production of that happy chemical called serotonin. Well, these um, fibers in fruits, veggies, they're actually gonna help feed that good gut bacteria um, and, and provide them with the nutrition to not only grow, but thrive. So um, yeah, so I think that is enough for today. I killed you guys with nutritional science, um, but I hopefully gave you a couple of tips and tricks that you can use. And maybe a little quote unquote food for thought as far as things that you can do that you don't need your doctor for. Again, I'm not recommending you come off any prescription medications. I'm just giving you extra tips that you maybe can add in at this time of our life that we're all quarantined and you can actually potentially consider with the help of your doctor, maybe weaning down or going on a lower dose of a medication, especially if your desire is not to be on a medication and to try to, you know, control your symptoms naturally. And the best way to do that, guys, is with nutrition. So I'll be back with you on the last video in this series on mental well-being. So stay tuned.